go. Greetings from Family Worship Center. It's wonderful to be together on this very beautiful Wednesday night. Excited about being able to bring to you a worship service from this sanctuary. Uh, we've been out of here for about six weeks and uh, really kind of stirred some emotions coming back in here. And to be able to experience the Wednesday night, uh, not just from our, our home like we've been doing for the past six weeks, but just to come together and uh, express our love, appreciation, and gratitude to the Lord. As we've been mentioning on Facebook, we're going to be bringing a segment together tonight uh, called Rise and Thrive. Our staff is coming together around the table that's behind me. We're going to worship God in a couple worship songs here. And then we're going to talk about how we can rise to the occasion, how we can thrive in this season. I don't believe that this season is about barely getting by. God is not a barely getting by type of God. Amen. He's a God that cares for us, a God that loves us. And he's a God that is with us. And if he is with us and in us, I can tell you that there's nothing that's chintzy or cheesy about God. God wants us to be empowered. God wants us to be revived. God wants us to be transformed in this season. As we've been doing over the last few Wednesday nights, like this and share it uh, on Facebook as you're watching it this evening. Make sure you text a friend during community building time. Uh, take this and make a watch party out of it. Uh, text a friend right now and encourage them to join you as we're worshiping God together. I believe that God is going to knit us together as a family. He's going to empower us. He's going to encourage us. And He's going to use this evening to glorify His name. You can also text in, if you would, a prayer request that you may have. But we want to pray over that prayer request. We want to keep that prayer request before the Lord throughout the rest of the week. And we want to see God meet you at your point of faith. Let's open up tonight with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the goodness of the Lord that is in our life. We thank you that you love us infinitely. We thank you, Lord God, that we can lift up our voice and worship and praise and exalt the name of the Lord. God, we know that there's people around the world tonight that would like to gather together and worship the name of Jesus. But God, we're going to do that not just in a corporate gathering. We're going to do that corporately yet individually from our own homes. We believe that you're bringing your presence into our home even right now. We believe that you're reviving our homes. That's granddad and grandmother. That is father and mother. That's son and daughter. Lord God, that's friend and family. We believe that you're using this season to cause our families to be revived and restored by your presence. I pray that the anointing of God would rest upon us. That you would use every one of our staff, Lord God, that is here to be able to speak a word of life, to speak a word of encouragement, to speak a word of grace, Lord God, into your people and help us to put into practice what you've given us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I want to encourage you to stand there in your living room tonight. Bring your family in with you. Get your Bibles close by you. I want to encourage you to raise your hands, clap your hands. Worship God with us as we enjoy his presence. Pastor Jamie, if you'll take it. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your good. How he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the animals. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground. When I think Oh, when I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, and He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about my Lord, how He picked me up, and He turned me around, and He placed my feet. On sunny ground, oh, it makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, worthy of all the glory and all the honor. 
thought I was worth saving And he came and changed my life He thought I was worth keeping So he cleaned me up inside He thought I was to die for So he sacrificed his life So I could be free so I could be home, so I could tell everyone I know You thought I was worth saving, oh, so you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping, so you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for, so you sat Sacrifice your life so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell everyone I know you thought I was worth saving. So you came, changed my life, you thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside, you thought. So I can be whole, so I can tell everyone I know Hallelujah, glory to the God who changed my life And I will praise you If the coronavirus has taught me anything over the last couple months is to not take things for granted. Even the ability to come together in corporate worship and worship the Lord. To take nothing for granted. Not to even take going down to the grocery store for granted. And I really would like to encourage you this evening not to take Jesus Christ for granted. He came intentionally to die for sins. Sins of yours and mine. And to make us new in Christ Jesus. Most of us know someone that doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I think God's got the world's attention right now. And I just declare that you don't have to be in fear to talk to someone about a loving Savior that died for their sins just like he died for ours. And I want us to have a, a moment of united in prayer this evening to ask the Lord to use us to reach people in this season more than ever with the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I thank you that as we pray and call upon your name, you hear us, you respond to us, and you transform our life. 
Lord, I thank you that as a boy you convicted me of sins and you came and transformed my life by washing all of my sins away and cleaning me up on the inside. Somehow you thought I was worth dying for. Somehow you thought I was worth raising from the dead on the third day for. And I want to thank you for going to the cross and going through the cross that I may have life. But God, it's more than just for me or the people of this inside the sanctuary at this moment. It's for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. It's that person that shall be saved. And I just decree, Lord, tonight that every person that's a born-again believer that's watching this live stream will be infused with boldness to share Jesus Christ with people that we know so that no one has to die and go to hell but everyone may experience life eternally with Jesus Christ our Lord. I pray for an infusion of boldness upon the church, an infusion of grace upon the church, that we would not try to overthink what we're going to say, but we would trust the Spirit of God to speak to us as we share our testimony with others. I'm asking God in this season more than ever, a harvest of souls. Men, women, boys, and girls of all nationalities, of languages, of ethnicity, Lord God, to be saved, to be transformed, and to be bought, brought into the family of God so that the quickening of Jesus may come. For soon and very soon you're returning for your bride. And I pray, God, that we're focused, that we're ready, that we're effective, and that our families are pleasing to the Lord. In Jesus Christ's awesome name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to thank you for joining us on this very beautiful Wednesday evening. And it's a time of community building. And as we've been doing over the last few, few months, we've been texting people during community building rather than walking up and shaking someone's hand. So I just want you to take this moment and text someone, uh, God cares for you and so do I. God cares for you and so do I. I want you to text a friend, let them know that you love them. Text a family member, know that you appreciate them. If your family's not with you in that living room right now, invite them in. We're going to get into a time of, of giving, a time of the Word, a time of praying. And I believe that God is going to unite us and empower us and help us. And even though it might seem like we're disconnected physically in a sense right now, we're not disconnected by God's Spirit. We're as strong of a family of God right now. I believe that we were before we had this coronavirus season. So text a friend right now. Give them a high five uh, through the phone and love on them. And uh, Pastor Jamie is coming so we can have some announcements. Awesome. Woo. It just feels good to be in the house of the Lord. It does. I'm telling you what. I don't know what you felt in your living room, but the Holy Spirit is here. And we're just excited to be able to bring uh, just something different uh, with our roundtable discussion. Just a reminder, you can always connect to everything that we're doing through our Facebook page and our, we now have an Instagram and also uh, our website, cogfwc.org. Just invite somebody to come and like our page. Uh, follow us on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, we would love to invite you. It's cog underscore fwc. And you can find out everything that's going on through those avenues. Um, also, we still have our, our hotline for our prayer. The phone number is 276-335-0437. If you have a prayer request, you can call that anytime and someone will answer that and pray for you or you can leave a message and we'll get back to you. Uh, just know that we're here uh, with the ability to pray for you uh, as we can. Um, also, uh, let's see, last night the men had a great time at their, their men's discipleship. No, not one. Thursdays. That's going to be every Thursday. Every Thursday at 7 o'clock, Zoom conference. If you want to be invited to that, please email office at cogfwc.org. And uh, they've been having a fantastic time of discipleship and prayer. The ladies have been at meeting on Friday nights. Um, we're actually not going to meet this coming Friday night. So stay tuned to our next Coffee and Conversations. We'll have that information out on our Facebook and our website as soon as we get that information to you. Uh, also, we're having our parking lot service coming up again on Sunday at 10 a.m. So if you can't join us, make sure you tune in online. We're always live streaming those services at 10 a.m. You can do that through our Facebook page and also through our YouTube channel, which is FWC Media Team. And we're just excited about what God is doing. Services.
in our parking lot services and also uh, through online. We're reaching a lot of people. So make sure you like that, you comment, that you share those things so that we can stay connected. Awesome. So once again, just thank you for your faithfulness and giving to Fishes and Loaves every single week. Your $2.50 a week uh, goes a long way and we're able to minister to a lot of people that are in need and we're excited about what God is doing coming up um, with Fishes and Loaves. We've got some distrib extra distribution happening in May, so we'll get that information to you uh, as soon as we have that available. And so just stay tuned. Make sure you check it out on our website and on our Facebook page, and you will be blessed. Amen. Amen. Great job, Pastor Jamie. Thank you very much. Uh, just uh, be reminded, uh, as far as our men's discipleship is concerned, we've been taking time during the week uh, to do devotions one with another. And I just want to thank the men that's been joining us. Uh, on Thursday night it's just incredible to be, to be able to get in the word encourage one another and then have that connection point every single day where either I'm called and, and given a scripture and prayed for or a testimony and prayed for or I'm calling that, that, that same person and giving them a scripture or praying over them man it's really been an infusion of grace and faith and we want to invite our men to just continually join us it's a great time in the Lord we're going to get ready to come together in a time of kingdom giving tonight uh, there's people that's been dropping off their offering at the church. Uh, there's been people that has been giving uh, online through our Tithely app. Uh, there's been people that's been uh, mailing it in at P.O. Box 1123 Beckley, West Virginia 25802. And we just want to say thank you for your, your, your faithfulness to the Lord, your generosity to the King. Whether it's to fishes and loaves or whether it's to FWC, we're all united together as one and God is using us in a very beautiful way. I'm excited in the next few minutes. We're going to have our, our, our hometown team come up. It's exciting to have them uh, with us this evening. It's going to be a good time in God's presence. But before we do, I want to bring a kingdom giving scripture to you. A very familiar one out of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. I love the word first in this, in this text. Seek first, okay? Not second, third, tenth, or hundredth. It says, put God first. If there's anything I could tell you today, I want to encourage you, put God first in everything that you do. In your living and in your giving. Put God first. And if you'll put God first, God will in turn put you first in His life and will bless you in an exceeding, abundant, and a wonderful way. Let's go to God tonight in prayer. And I'm just going to declare that if there's anything in your life that's a miss or a rye, that God's going to put it all back together again. Father, I thank you for the grace of the Lord that finds us in strength, in favor, and in join Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for our worship team that's gathered together to worship your name. I thank you, Lord God, for our staff that's gathered together to worship your name and to, and to talk about how to thrive in this season. And Lord, I think the first thing we need to do as a family is to be able to say, we're going to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, and we believe as we do, all these things are going to be added to us. So I pray that you will bless your people, Lord God, spiritually and financially and relationally and socially, that you would increase your anointing and favor upon their life. I rebuke the devour that would come against any of them in any type of health-related way, social way, financial way. Lord God, may there be no restriction in their lives spiritually that may grace flow to them and be multiplied to them. And God, may you build your body, encourage your body and supernatural release favor upon your church in Jesus name if you're out if you're without employment I declare an employment back into your life if there's restraint during this season I declare a great release of God under your life as you put God first in everything you do and we thank you for this Jesus in the awesome name of Jesus we pray amen and amen well at your own home, we just encourage you to be seated. Get your Bibles out on your lap. I'm going to get back over here to the table if I can get a staff member to come put this over here. And I'm going to have Pastor Jamie and Cindy join me at the table. And after she shares her testimony, I'll have the rest of the staff come and join. So bear with us as we find our, ourselves getting into place here. And we're excited about ministry tonight a little bit differently. See if we can get everything 
in its proper placement here. Cindy Allen, it is great to have you. We love you, girl, and I'm very excited that you're a part of the FWC uh, ministry team. She's been posting recently about her desire to get back to Mexican food in the restaurant, and my, my soul has been jumping up and down, and my Mexican appetite's been right with you, girl. Super uh, ready for some compostre. I'm not trying to promote this over that, but just, just ready for a little bit of Mexican cuisine. So um, I think during this time, we are not taking really too much for granted. <laughs> like, we just appreciate some chips and salsa. It's, it's a good thing. So right off the top tonight, we're going to just focus on what we call rise and thrive. We believe at Family Worship Center that God put family in Family Worship Center for a purpose. We want our families not to just exist. We want them to thrive. So from where you are this evening, I want you to take your Bibles out and go to the book of Titus chapter 2. And I'm going to be reading verses 1 to 8 before I have Cindy bring a testimony. Uh, just to whet your appetite a little bit, both of her parents have experienced COVID-19, uh, the coronavirus, um, during this season, and God has done some amazing things in their life. And I wanted to just bring <clears throat> our focus right from the very beginning about the need to have a rebirth of the family altar, to have a revival of the family altar. So let's start in Titus chapter 2, verses 1 through 8, and it reads like this. But as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. Dad and granddad, mom and grandmother, God is wanting you to speak sound doctrine in your home. You don't need to give someone a piece of your mind. You need to give them a piece of God's holy word. Speak the things which are for sound doctrine, that the older men be sober, number one. Reverent, number two. Temperate, number three. Sound in the faith, sound in love, sound in patience. That's the guy you want to hang out with. There's a good list. Um, one that's sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, sound in love, sound in patience. The older women, likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanders, not given to much wine. Teachers of good things. That they may admonish young men to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. And finally, likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works, in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, Sound speech that cannot be condemned. Wouldn't that be great? Every word that comes out of your mouth that it cannot be condemned. That one who is opponent may be ashamed having nothing evil to say about you. This is what God wants our homes to be. Whether we're older men, younger men. Older women, younger women. Titus chapter 2 verses 1 to 8 really gives us a check sheet of how our lives should be modeling God's holy word. And God puts it very clear that there's going to be some, some things that if your life does not model that, you need certain things removed out of your life so that your life can model God's holy word. And one of the things that I've found to be very real in 2020 is that a lot of people have been used to being busy. In fact, if you look at Facebook much in this season, you'll find that some people are kind of on the verge of pulling their hair out because they're not used to staying home. They're not used to just uh, kind of sheltering in. They like being busy. And uh, I've heard people say during my ministry lifetime, man, if I could just uh, not be so busy, I could do more for the Lord. Well, I think God answered their prayer and uh, just kind of brought it right to them and, and seeing what they will do with it. So we're going to start out with a quick word of prayer that our staff will just experience the anointing of the Lord. And then we're going to go right into rebuilding the altar because every one of us need it in our homes. So let's pray. Father, I just ask tonight for the quickening of your word, the quickening of your spirit to be upon our lips and to be upon our heart so that as we speak the word of God, everyone that is listening will ingest it, 
will be able to form, formulate it, Lord God, and to put it into action, action plans and action points in their home. I declare that as the word of God goes forth, as the testimonies of the Lord go forth, that there will be no condemnation experienced in our hearts, but you'll give grace to the speaker and grace to the hearer. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Cindy, if you can grab the microphone, we've experienced, let's make sure it's on. All right, good. Uh, we've experienced over the last couple of weeks that your parents uh, really got hit hard uh, with this COVID-19 virus. And uh, some people may think that this is only affecting people that don't know Jesus. But there are, there are plenty of people that do know Jesus and love Jesus that have experienced COVID-19. And some of them have gone on to heaven during this season. So we've experienced that the just and the unjust have had to battle uh, this coronavirus. So uh, if you would talk to the camera, talk to the people, talk to us about what it's been like walking with your parents through this season and what God's done in their life as God is rebuilding all of our family altars. Okay. Um, my parents have a ministry up in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. So they're 18 hours away from us. Um, they both got hit with the, the coronavirus. Um, my mom, not as bad as my dad. Um, my mom and dad both they had to go by ambulance to the hospital. And um, my mom had it, but not near as bad as my dad. Um, my dad had a fever for two solid weeks, um, almost got put on a ventilator. Um, I give God all the glory. The only reason why he isn't dead now is because of God and prayers. Um, before he got put on the ventilator, we were told he was going to. I immediately reached out to pastors and, you know, friends, pray, praying people. And they reached God. And God will use it for his glory. And I know that. And um, my, my mom was, she's home now, and she's already back in her ministry work. Um, my dad has came home, praise the Lord. He is still on oxygen and happened to use that oxygen and they have a nurse coming in and a therapist but throughout the whole process it was hard to talk to my dad because he couldn't speak because he didn't have the oxygen to speak um he also has double pneumonia on top of it so he would say god's not left me he is my anchor and he knew you know and the way i see the people who I, I kept in, you know, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. We're going to, it'll be formed on us, but it won't prosper. And we have to stand on that word and Amen. we have to speak on that word. And that's, that's something that I've always, you know, learned that I have to do. You know, you have to speak those words out loud and you have to claim those words out loud. I know after one Sunday service before I had called him after church and and it's hard for me because I'm my parents have always been strong Christian people always and it's hard for me to pray over my parents because right. they're my elders you know I don't feel like I'm worthy but I did call my dad and I said I don't want you to speak I'm going to pray over you and you just hear what I have to say and I commanded that to leave his body because Amen. it was trespassing on private property Amen. and that's what I told it I said you know it's on tri private property you're no longer supposed to be there, get off of him right now in Jesus' name. And I'm thankful that my parents have raised me that way, you know, but they both are healing, doing great, and I give God all of the glory through it all. Amen. Amen. Is this microphone still on? We can hear? Okay. Um, so... I want you to give everyone your dad's name because we're going to pray over him. And I want everyone at home to be able to uh, join us in prayer. So if you'll give. Absolutely. His name is Donnie Price. My mom is Sarah Price. Um, I was going to. Mom told me this morning. She said that they checked her blood because she also had the coronavirus. But her antibodies were strong. Come on. And they want to take her plasma to do an antibodies Yes, and I said, well, did you tell him that's because you have the blood of Jesus in your body? There you go. <laughs> and she said, oh, you know I did. Come on. And, um, but, yes, so it, it, it's all, it's been overwhelming and hard because I'm so far from them. And the yeah. hospital has been hard to get a hold of anybody. You don't know what's going on. And I'm a female, and females are emotional. So I'm <laughs> like, don't make me call somebody, you know. 
but I've had to do a you know an emotional check, and I've done that several times. Right. Uh, even at work, I get all upset, and I can't get a hold of anybody. And then you know you hear that sweet, small sounding voice. Yeah. Hey, I've got you. Yes. Hold tight, you know. And, and then you're like, okay, God, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. You got to stay strong. Amen. One of the things we, we recently covered in our men's discipleship on Thursday night is that we need to rebuild the altars in our home. We need a revival of the altar. And the Word of God says in 1 Kings 17 that uh, Ahab came to, uh, to the conclusion by the word of a mighty man of God, Elijah, a man of prayer, that except at Elijah's word, it was not going to rain on the land. And James chapter 5 backs it up and said it did not rain for three and a half years. That's a prayer life. When you can pray and God shuts the heavens up, that, that, that's a prayer life. And you, where you got boldness enough to stand in front of the king and say, there's about to be a showdown. And, and, and we learned it. It was for two reasons. Two reasons. Number one, the people of God began to uh, falter in their opinions between God and Baal. They, between, they began to just halt between the two. And really, sometimes we're following God, and sometimes we're following Baal. And, and God just doesn't groove that way. He says, you'll have no other gods before me. It's just he's very clear on what it's going to be. In fact, if you go back to the book of Joshua, Joshua says, listen, guys, you're going to have to make a decision. If you've been reading through the Bible with us this month, you know that we were going through the book of Joshua. And Joshua just comes out and says, we're going to make a covenant before God. And we're going to choose today who we're going to serve. And Joshua said, my house and I, we've already made a decision. We are going to serve the Lord. And if I could just speak directly uh, to, to families uh, online tonight, I would just declare that you need to get very sound in the way that you're going to serve the Lord in your home. Not just at Family Worship Center on a Sunday or on a Wednesday, but that you're going to live this way always at home. That's the first thing that had to happen. They, got, they had to make a decision. Am I going to serve Baal? Or am I going to serve God? The second thing that had to happen is Elijah said, we've got to rebuild the altar. So he told him, he said, I want you to come to me. And he began to rebuild the altar. Stones that had not been hewn out by the hand of man, but had been created by God. And he took the 12 stones and he rebuilt the altar. And he put the sacrifice on it. And then he put the most important gift he could, the most expensive gift they had in that day. It wasn't gold or silver. It was water. 12 barrel fulls of water and they poured it over the top of it and Elijah prayed a simple 68 word prayer and God sent fire down from heaven why when you pray before the Lord and you seek the Lord you may not have to pray for five hours to get an answer you've been praying you've been seeking the Lord you've been calling upon the name of God and you may say at home pastor I don't feel like my prayer life is all that good or I don't think that I can pray as good as Elijah did well, none of us know, really, the words that Elijah prayed as far as all of his prayers are concerned. And God is not looking for eloquence of speech. He's looking for a broken and contrite spirit. He's looking for a heart that is into God. And I just want to encourage you tonight to maybe even take a moment to repent. God, uh, I've let some bell stuff in my home. I've let, uh, you're here in my home, but we've also got some other stuff in our home that's competing with God. And sometimes... Uh, we've got things that are, that are making the altar kind of fade away. And I believe that we, we need to come back to the place where we know undeniably that God has revived our homes. God has restored our homes. And that we put prominence, we put a place back in our homes that says this is the altar. And the altar is important to us. And I believe that your dad and your mom uh, are recipients uh, of a miracle in their life. They've prayed. We've been praying. I believe that this coronavirus has made a lot of us step up and say, you know what? We need to do some spring cleaning in our own spiritual lives, our own spiritual homes, and see God do a work in our hearts. I just want you to join us here in the sanctuary, there online, uh, just asking that God would continue to lift up Donnie, uh, that, this, that this oxygen mask can fade away, this oxygen can fade away as far as what man can do, and that God would just touch his blood, God would touch his body and restore him. So, Father, I just thank you. That repentance is simply making a 180 degree about face towards you. And Lord, I just thank you that we can be people of prayer. Lord, we don't have to try to impress you with what we know or don't know. We don't have to try to make it sound all sweet and smooth. We can simply say, help. 
God, I believe that you answer help prayers. Lord, Donnie needs your help today. He needs you to restore him today. He needs you to supernaturally do a finished work. Coronavirus, you cannot stay in his body. And the effects thereof can't stay in his body. And the residual effects can't be in his body. I declare a supernatural release of God's blood, a supernatural release of God's presence, a supernatural release of God's grace, and that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, even right now, he's made whole. Be delivered, be raised up, be set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Cindy, you are a very important part of Family Worship Center, a very important part of our staff, and we thank you for the impact that you make to this church and through this church, and we're excited that you shared your testimony with us. And I'm excited that God touched your mom and dad, and uh, we got a chance to rejoice and shout, and I think we've all learned some things in this season. So she's going to make her way back to the seats over there, and our, our staff is going to come up now at this point, or the rest of our staff. I would like to say the rest of our staff, but we've got some of them at home right now. We just have asked particular ones to come in, and, and uh, we're excited that we could have a, a family roundtable session tonight. I've got to make sure this other microphone's on. Yep, we're on. It's live. It's hot, and it's good. I'll give you an air high five. There we go. Another one there. Some more air high fives over here. So... Praise the good name of the Lord. So we talked about restoring the family altar. I've asked Marsha and Shelby to come tonight uh, to talk to us about what it is like to model a godly life. Uh, Marsha and Shelby have been pillars in the community for a long time. Uh, they have been leading Beckley Dream Center, uh, what I affectionately refer to as fishes and loaves, uh, for 25, over 25 years now. Uh, and God's been using that ministry in a wonderful way. And they've been modeling a life after Christ uh, in Beckley, West Virginia for a lot of years. And I don't mean that in any negative sense. If God, is, if God has given you longevity of life, there's a lot of people that don't have that testimony. So I'm very thankful for what God has done in you guys and through you guys. And I would like for you to speak to people that maybe like 55 and older, 60 and older, uh, who are walking. I don't, yeah, I don't. I'm, I'll try to be careful. I don't mean anything. I don't mean anything negative. I really don't. I really believe in a four generation church. I really do. I believe that the older should be connecting with the younger and everything in the middle. I just I I believe that everyone in the church has value, extreme important value, and I believe right now we really need uh, our senior glow crew really modeling Christian living, Christian values, morals, testimonies, how we talk. Some of our young people really need to see some good models in front of them. And if you guys want to take just a few moments and speak to us what it's like to model a godly life um, in the body of Christ and at home. Okay. Um, our, our first scripture that, that we talked about comes from uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 17, which says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be you separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And another scripture that we felt was appropriate um, is from um, Ephesians 6 and 12. Hmm. And it says, and this one I think so many times we need to realize when somebody's on our nerves or <laughs> what I refer to as a sandpaper person sometimes, yes. Yes. that we're not wrestling. It's not that person. We right. don't wrestle against flesh and blood, which is what the scripture says. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. So many times is... Um, Shelby and I have said th throughout our ministry with fishes and loaves and that evolving into the Dream Center, he, God has put people in our lives that are just like sandpaper. They're mm -hmm. just grinding. Sure. And we've learned <laughs> through the years that if we'll just stop and say, okay, God, what is it in me that you're trying to bring out and That's that good. you're trying to rub away Yes. that we'll learn to love that person and they're not breathing our air anymore there you and go. being a sandpaper person. And you So know, what are you trying to do in me 
through that person. Exactly. That's good. Exactly. Um, you know, and, and I think, too, so many times while we've been in this quarantine situation, we're with our families, we're with our closer friends, and sometimes people breathe your air. I mean, sure. that's just flat out, they breathe your air. That's a good, and, that's a good terminology. <laughs> You're breathing my air. <laughs> and, you know, I just encourage you to do what I have to do so many times, and I'm, I'm not perfect at it by any means and don't pretend to be. Um, you just have to back off and, and pray a minute and walk off in the other room. You know, when, when you've just been to the grocery store and you come back and there's no milk, and you say, why do we have no milk? Well, there was a half a cup of milk in the container. You know, the half a cup of milk's not going to last for a week. That's right. So, you know, you got to <coughs> take a breath and walk off. And, right. And just pray a minute and let God refresh you and, and restore you. So if I'm hearing you correctly... You can be saved for a long time, and you're still dealing with everyday, normal things that could bug you if God don't help you. Exactly Okay, so right. whether, you, whether you're newly <laughs> saved or you're young and saved, or whether you've walked with God, some, some people walk with God 40, 50 years, and God's still using some sandpaper to rub off some rough edges in our life. And, and, and in my case, he'll probably still be doing that until the day I die. Okay. <laughs> Probably in us all. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I always, I always try to, to live my life every day. Now, I fall short, but mm -hmm. I always try to live my life every day. And I remember as a child and even as, as an adult, my daddy always saying, live your life so that people will know there's something different about you because your life may be the only Bible they ever read. That's right. And I remember him coming in from work one night and tears just rolling. And uh, he said a man had come up to him at work and said, I got saved last night. Thank and you. you're why? Because I wanted what you had. There was come something on. different about you. Yeah. And I've never forgotten that. Ooh. So I That's just, probably years ago. Oh, I was just, I was in elementary school. I feel the witness of the Lord still. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's something I always try to keep in mind. And like I said, I fall short many times. But you just go back and ask God to forgive you and help me not to stumble over that rock again. That's right. So, shall we? I'll turn it over to you at this oh, point. Thank you a lot. Um, of course, I'm, I'm not the talkative one in this group, okay? Okay. And, and they're my sandpaper. All right. They're really pushing me to do this. Lord, help me not to be her sandpaper. <laughs> but anyhow, the first one I want to do is, um, you know, if I can figure out where it is, Romans 12 and 2. Yeah. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Amen. And, and it is really hard. Um, I've led two lives. I have grew up in a Christian home. Then as a teenager, I strayed away. Sure. Uh, didn't do a lot of bad things, but, you know, I strayed away. And uh, my husband and I married. Um, I was just 16, but we had an awesome life together, beginning and the ending. He, um, he became ill with a brain cancer, mm. and I knew what I, what I needed to do for him. Yeah. And uh, I, I needed him to know God. I wanted him to know where he was going to be, and I wanted to be there also. Amen. So both of us had to do, had to do some changing. Can I, can I ask you maybe what age you were at when that, when that was taking place? Um. Clarence was in his uh, early 40s. Early 40s. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. When he had brain cancer. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been gone 25, 26 years. Okay. Maybe longer than that. Okay. You lose track. You don't mean to, but you do sure. lose track. Oh, yeah. But anyhow, um, I told him, I said, you know, we've, we've got to do something. So, and he really, he really liked the pastor that we had at the time. 
and um, because the pastor would come and talk to Clarence. Yeah. He would um, pick, come pretending to look at furniture. We had a furniture store. And, uh, <laughs> but he always made a point to come in and talk to Clarence. Mm -hmm. And Clarence was, you know, he was very good to him. He gave him, you know, uh, or gave the church a lot of things that the church needed that we had in the furniture store. So through all of that, he built what needed to be built. Yeah. And uh, so anyhow, one day um, he came by and uh, he asked Clarence, he said, uh, are you ready to make a difference? And so anyhow, that day, they we lived next door to the furniture store. And so they went to the house and he came, the pastor came back over and hollered him and he said, you got to come over here. So we went and we just had a, Big old time. <laughs> awesome. At home. At home, yes. Revival at home. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, and, and things changed. Clarence lost a lot of his um, memory and everything through the past years, but he really changed and moved forward. But anyhow. So I really, this, is, this has touched your home. Yes. You know what it's like to have an ungodly home? And then you knew what it was like to have a transformation. Right. Good. And because I had raised, we had raised our children not in church. I took them when they were young. I never would send them. I did take them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we just got, you know, you, you move away. But I don't think my children totally moved away. I think they still had, had all that in them because, you know, things that would say and things to do. So anyhow. <laughs> But they're changing. They're coming. Amen. And, Marsha, I forgot where I am here. I had it marked, but you know how that goes. Yes, you are. Which, over on this side. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, John 17, uh, 24 and 15. It said, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil, the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Awesome. Anyhow. So for our seniors, our seniors can be sanctified. Our young people can be sanctified, set apart. And I appreciate your testimony about your husband, that God really did a salvation work of grace in your home. Yes. So really, whatever age of life we are, we can invite Jesus in. And I really, I really believe that God wants our faith to be more than just what we have when we come inside the four walls of the sanctuary. I believe God is had us in what I call a deployment mode where we've been evicted out of the building in a sense to really make sure we're walking this out step by step, faith by faith uh, from our house. And, and, and sometimes uh, we, we experience some interesting places. Uh, I know that, that you have a, a mom at home, um, and so uh, you're, you're with her probably now maybe even more than you were before. And, and and you had a husband there in your home, but you've been no you've been in the in the in the single world in that sense, you know, right. uh, without people living there in your home. And and there's so many different dynamics that make up our home. So, uh, it it your stories may be similar to theirs, may be different than theirs. But I just want to encourage all of our senior aglow crowd to live a life where you model faith for the people that you influence. And that includes people your age, but also a lot of people that are younger. And just like what was said a few moments ago, you're going to have seasons. Seasons where you found yourself so passionate for the Lord, you may annoy people. Um, uh, or seasons that you really need to have a resurgence of faith and re-encouragement. Uh, you may be having a season of sandpaper people just plowing through your life. And it's just getting rid of some stuff that needs to go. And I, and I really believe that that if you've walked with the Lord for a while, you need to model uh, for people around you 
how to talk like a believer, how to think like a believer, how to have compassion and care one for another as a believer does. And really, I believe the words that come out of our mouth need to be uplifting. They need to be encouraging. It's so easy to pull someone down. But we're not in a season where we can afford to pull people down. We need to encourage one another in the Lord. And I, I just want to thank both of you uh, for bringing that word. And I just want one of the two of you to pray uh, that, that our seniors will set the example in our community, in our church, in our homes so that our younger generations have a model to follow, whichever one of you feel led to pray. I want to make one more statement for the older sure. people. You know, you may not care for animals. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> and, but, you know, um, I've always had a pet in the house because kids always wanted a pet. Well, I lost the one I had a few years ago, and I kept saying I wasn't going to get another one, wasn't going to get another one. Well, one day we were at Lowe's, and this lady came in with this puppy. And I fell in love with the puppy right off. So anyhow, I ended up with another puppy. She's a little older now. But, you know, even with her in the house, I talk to that dog. Yes. Like <laughs> yes. I catch myself telling, it, telling her that she's got to be good because I'm trying to be good, and she doesn't need to make a mess. And, and <laughs> Hey, that's what happens when you get old. Companionship with pets. That's <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. Let's pray. All right. Father, we thank you for the day and your many blessings. Lord, you've just blessed us in so many ways. And, Father, we thank you for uh, the ministry that you've given each one here at the table. And thank you, Father, for sending Pastor Luke and Pastor Jamie our way. Father, we believe they're just what we needed for this season. Thank Lord, we Lord. just ask that... You guide each one of us, the Father, those who have, um, much as I hate to say this, entered the senior realm of our lives. Father, we just ask that you would use us, Father, that uh, we could guide the younger people and that yes, they God. would see that we do have some wisdom and that they would come to us for advice, Father, and that, Father, we would give them godly advice and that they would see how we trust you and walk with you just by, by watching us every time the church doors are open, Father. Yes, Lord, Lord, we just ask that you would be with our young people and, and draw them to you, Father. And, Father, just help our, our seniors and our young people and our middle-aged, Father, just to draw close to you in this time and to, to be all that you would have us to be. And, Father, just fine-tune our ears to your voice and your Holy Spirit and that we would follow your leading. And these things we ask in your name and amen. Amen. So, Pastor Jamie, we want to talk just for a moment. We're going to transition this into a rising to the blessing of a thriving marriage. And we're just going to take two or three minutes uh, to really talk about what the Word of God says in Ephesians chapter 5 about submitting one to another. Uh, I know there's been quite a few marriage conferences about women submitting to husbands and, and uh, husbands loving their wife as Christ loves the church. And, and that is completely biblical. Uh, when you're in quarantine, um, you need to learn how to submit one to another. Uh, because that is a very valid, practical principle. Um, my wife is a very strong leader. And sometimes I find with me being in her home space uh, that I need to uh, take a step back, maybe three. Uh, <laughs> You're breathing my air. You're breathing. <laughs> I'm breathing her air. And I think a lot of times we've heard words about wives submitting to their husbands, but we don't talk so much about husbands needing to submit to their wife. Um, and to submit means that you come under. Uh, God has not made a wife subservient. She is a co-equal, okay, mm -hmm. that brings a balance in the home. So, Pastor Jamie, uh, you've been doing a fantastic job in our home, uh, co-leading in this season. So, Talk about the need that a wife may have for that a husband to trust her leadership, to trust uh, that, that role that God has placed in your life. There's a nurturing, a caring about a mom that's different than a dad. You're laughing. Uh, but there, there's, there's some difference. I'm not prepared so. for this. Um, you know, it's been interesting for sure um, because, you know, even though we – we don't put necessarily want to put roles on people. It's just a natural thing for the, the territory of the home to be kind of in the women's wheelhouse a lot of times. And so having everybody under your feet 
uh, currently all the time has been different. And it's been Everyone maybe a, under your feet. a little bit of a sandpaper <laughs> moment. I love that. Um, you know, and please and forgive me for breathing your air. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Um, one scripture, as you were talking about sandpaper, um, that came to my uh, that I had written down earlier was Ephesians four two, or I can read one and two, and it says, um, "I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling of which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love." Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And I think that's really appropriate for what we're talking about. Um, just learning how to keep unity in the home because you are going to get on each other's nerves. I mean, it's just a natural thing when you're not used to being around each other all the time and you're having to balance out what working in the home looks like and what teaching kids in the home look like and um, not eating out, but eating in, and not over and over and over having again. Having everybody eat every blasted thing <laughs> two days after you've been to the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> Who's doing the yep. dishes? Oh yeah. Um, you know, try paper, paper plates. plates. Yeah, paper just plates. Trying to make the groceries last until you go out again. Because managing toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just been for sure, definitely uh, interesting. But learning to stay. Um, in humility and learning to stay in unity with one another, um, giving each other some space when you need the space, taking some time. Um, I know for me, leaving everybody at home so I can go to the grocery store is actually a little bit of a reprieve to just turn on some worship music <laughs> and drive in silence um, has been good, I think. And I found myself, you know, just to be transparent, on Friday um, of this last week, um, no, it wasn't Friday. It was Monday. I don't even know what day it is anymore. That's another That's thing. That's quarantine. What day Trying to figure out what day it is. I have is. no idea. One day last week. There you go. Um, finding myself even being personally overwhelmed just with, I don't know, I couldn't put, I put, put up my finger on it, but um, I found myself putting in my headphones, turning on some worship music, opening the word, and just sitting in the living room. I think you were gone turkey hunting or something and Maddie and Nora were I made them go upstairs and take a nap because I just needed it um, and just finding myself just being at peace and allowing the Holy Spirit just to kind of renew my mind and refresh my spirit yes. um, and it was just like fresh water that just rinsed away some of that negativity or that the sandpaper that's been rubbed he needed to be washed away I don't know um so, yeah, just learning to how to share the space. And, you know, you share your space anyway all the time as a married couple, but it's been a little different in learning how to balance that and not take your frustration out on your spouse, um, but to give them extra grace when grace is needed and uh, just allow the Holy Spirit to continue to do that work in your life and doing it with long-suffering and gentleness, and bearing with one another in love. Give each other a break, you know. Cut some slack there when you need it. And mm -hmm. uh, I would say just learning how not to be critical. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's easier to go to the critical side of things sometimes yeah. because the flesh wants to go there, but you got to die to your flesh. Yep. Take up your cross daily, follow Jesus. Two words that you spoke just a moment ago that stood out so much was humble yourself, yeah. and the second was surrender. Yeah. I believe you got to work on surrendering to the Lord. Because you got emotions, you got yeah. passions, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you got to say, uh, I might need to go take a prayer walk. I may need to yes. put some headphones on uh -huh. and just go clear my head. I think when you get quarantined and you just start doing things like real tight quarters and just getting in that rut, it can be, uh, it can be a bad thing. So you got to bust out of that and go take a walk. You might need to throw some seeds in the garden, or you might need to hoe some weeds, or you might need to cut some grass, do something that's a little bit different than just being inside, and, and giving each other what I would declare as the benefit of the doubt, yeah. because you can't, you can't trust that your spouse is Jesus, you can't trust that they know everything, that they're just, all of a sudden just came into a big old jackpot of wisdom, <laughs> and they're trying to do this just like you're trying to do it, and it's different, so. Um, and I think, you know, to keep in mind too, and I've been reminded 
our kids are watching. Yes, they are. And they're under our feet right now all the time. And so they're watching our response and how, how we respond to our spouse. You know, my girls are watching me and how I respond to you when we're frustrated or how you respond to me. And it's a teachable moment right now in our home to make sure that we're guarding our children, we're guarding their ears, we're guarding their eyes, and that we, that we set the example for them of how they're supposed to respond to their spouse when they become uh, married and, and what they're supposed to do, you know, I think that's important to keep in mind that your kids are watching and that you need to be careful how you respond. And if you feel yourself getting frustrated, go to your bedroom, shut the door. You know, one of the things that we've always really tried to stick with and we haven't been perfect at it is never arguing in front of our kids going away to a place in the house where we shut the door or we send them away so that we can talk out our differences. Um, so it's kind of harder when there's kids and people around all the time in your house right now, but making it a point to, to be intentional to how you respond. Excellent. So I want to encourage those that are parents joining us online tonight uh, to have kids in the home uh, to create a date space over the next seven days uh, in your home. Uh, send your kids to their bedroom, give them a little bit of food, uh, tell them that you're not going to be available for the next two hours, three hours, and if you have to, set up a picnic basket in the middle of your living room floor, move the chairs back, and uh, we haven't done this ourselves. We're going to, we, was, and I'm saying this because uh, Jamie told me in the last couple of days, Luke, we need a date, and it's, it's the truth, but we may have to get very creative on how to take a date and, and let the kids take a nap, and we take a date in the living room, and then... And then that is what it is. We might have to have a back porch date this week. But uh, just creating the opportunity uh, to uh, love one another, appreciate one another. We've been praying over our sheriff's department, police department recently because there's been a spike in domestic violence during the season. And that is not something that a believer can afford to do. You do not need to go into anger. Uh, you need to just humble yourself, take a moment to repent, if you know that what's coming out of your mouth would match up with a godly heart, a godly response, then you need to bite that tongue a little bit if you need to. Go to another room. Uh, find a prayer corner. Just God Almighty, help me. Uh, and, and just ask God to give you grace. And I just decree right now the blessings of God and the favor of God over the youngest marriage and the oldest marriage at the same time. That God would speak peace into your home. That God would speak grace into your heart. That you'd be able to submit to one another as unto the Lord. And that God would give you a spirit of joy, of life, of peace, of favor. And that God would prosper your marriage, prosper your family, and prosper you in this season more than ever. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to transition. I know we've been taking just a little bit of time. But I just want to talk to Leslie just for a, a few minutes here. Uh, about how to model life and discipleship as a single mom. Uh, some, some families don't have a two-parent home flowing in that home at the moment. doesn't make them anything less than. There's no less than in the kingdom. Uh, God makes all things beautiful in His sight. And you have walked a road of, of, of being a single mom and, and, and modeling a life uh, so I want us to talk to some families right now. Uh, maybe they would like to be married, or maybe they hope to never be married again. But how do you how do you do this as a single parent uh, in this quarantine season? Well, my daughter's um, an adult, so I haven't had to do too much in this quarantine season. But I think that one of the things that single parents always face is um, financial difficulties or financial worries because there's only one salary in the home. And so I think that um, one of the things raising my daughter is that I've had to um, teach her and show her that God is the, our provision. Mm -hmm. He's not just our provider, but he's the provision. Yes. And, um, you know, I've taught her, like my parents taught me, to be faithful in giving, to be faithful in tithing, and that when you don't, that it's just like having a bag full of coins and with holes in it. You don't know where your money went. And so she's Good. a single mother now, and she has carried that with her and has taught her son. So if he gets 
ten dollars for his grade card, then he knows that a dollar of that's going to tithes, <laughs> right? Because that belongs to God, and I can't spend that at Walmart. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> there you go. And uh, so, uh, thankfully, he's good at math, so he can always figure out his tithes. <laughs> so, you, so you, but you've modeled that, just like your parents modeled it for you. Yes. You've modeled it for your daughter. R- right. My parents always modeled that for me, and it was a hard lesson for me. Um, and they prayed, and they instilled it in me, and they drilled it into me. But I, I had a really hard time with that as a young single mom because I felt like I needed that money more than the church needed that money. And I can even remember one time that I said, God, I'm going to pay my tithes because I know that's what I'm supposed to do. But if I pay this tithes, I don't have enough money to pay the disconnect on my water bill. Wow. So I'm going to pay this, God, but I need you to give it back to me before Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I yeah. just I need Very you to give it prayer. back to me before Sunday because I have to pay this bill by Monday. And I paid my tithes on Wednesday evening um, when I had gotten paid. And uh, on Sunday, it seems like it was a Sunday morning um, that a lady, I came into church late. And a lady, if it was also a single parent, was waiting for me. And she said, I was so afraid that you were not going to make it to church. Um, and she said, I haven't been able to sleep. She said, God won't even let me sleep. I've got to give you this money. <laughs> and I was so afraid <laughs> that you were not going to be here. And it was the exact amount of my tithing. So, and I can tell you story after story after story of how God has provided and how he has been faithful. But he also expects us to be faithful and to do our part. Amen. Knowing that you can trust the Lord. We were sharing a scripture recently on a Wednesday night uh, out of the book of Psalms chapter 37. Verses 3 and 4, trust the Lord, do good, live in the land, feed on his faithfulness. And it's, that's a life scripture to me. Trust the Lord. Uh, I've watched it since I've been at Family Worship Center, how fishes and loaves have trusted the Lord. We've watched it here at Family Worship Center um, in, in, in different realms and ways of trusting the Lord from two-parent homes to single-parent homes really learning how to trust the Lord. And if you're a single parent tonight, I'm telling you that God loves you. He loves you. He, he takes care of you. I don't believe that there's like child number one and child number two in God's family. I believe that we're all uh, children number one, that God doesn't play favorites, that God loves us and that he cares for us. And whether you have a single income, you can be the widow of Zarephath and it looks like you have no income and God will provide supernaturally for you and put meal back in your barrel. He really knows how. And, you know, I can remember um, probably being 19 or 20 years old and God speaking to me that I would speak to nations and that I would go to nations and with nations I would worship. And I thought, how is that ever going to happen? I am a single mom in Beckley, West Virginia, <laughs> you know. But um, probably by the time I was 27, I went on my first mission trip. And at that time, I didn't even have a job. I was unemployed. But God provided and Come made a on. way. And so it doesn't matter if you are a single mom and you feel like that you're counted out. You know, mm. what God says, he is true to his word. He's yeah. faithful to his word. And he's going to complete the work that he promised. You That's know? right. So, um, and now even my daughter as a single mom has gone on a mission trip with, uh, we went together to That's Tijuana awesome. a few years ago. And um, I got to see God using my baby, you know, in ministry and in missions and praying over people. So, um, you know, there's two generations of single moms that God has still decided to choose and use. That's right. Regardless of our circumstances. That's right. And over the last uh, about two months, three months, uh, Leslie and our staff have sat down and talked. uh, And God has just brought her into uh, this season of, of pastoring our young adults. And I'm so excited uh, this ministry that God is raising up at Family Worship Center that is called Equipped. And I believe that our best days are yet before us. And, and she is walking through that credentialing process. And God is calling her uh, into licensed ministry. And I'm excited that we're taking this journey with you and you're taking this journey with us. And that God's making us the better for it. And just in this moment, I'd like for you to just look at the camera and pray. Whew. Pray over single parents and just break a spirit of hopelessness because the enemy loves to try to make people despair, but there's never famine in the Father's house, and there's always more than enough provision with God. So I just want you to speak a word 
of encouragement through prayer into that parent that may be, may be facing some tightness right now. Maybe they're unemployed. Maybe they really don't know where their next meal is coming from. They don't know how this is going to line up. Maybe they've never been in this place before. And they're hearing words tonight from a single mom. And they're like, well, if God could do it for her, if God could do it for Leslie, surely he could do it for me. So could you just pray uh, for those that are joining us tonight that, is, that are experiencing that moment of, man, can I really trust God? Yes, I pray right now in the name of Jesus yes, God. that God would break the spirit of hopelessness and the spirit of despair off of every parent, every single parent home, yes. every um, two-parent home even. God, yes, that God. you would break every spirit of hopelessness, every spirit of um, despair, of mm -hmm. not measuring up, of being different, God. Yes, God. That it feels like they're counted out. But, God, you have never counted us out. Hallelujah. God, you have never counted us out. Thank you, God. God, you care about everything that concerns us. You care about every one of your children. God, you care about every single parent. You care about every child that only has one parent. Yes. God, I know a lot of times it is hard for the children because they feel rejected. They feel like their life is different than um children that have two parents in their home but God you promised that you would be our father yes. you promised that you would be our um, closer than a brother and that you would be our spouse and that you would be everything that we need God I pray that in this time and in this moment that you will minister in the homes God of single parents and in the children yes, God. God that you will speak to their hearts and that you will know that, uh, that they will know that in you there is nothing missing there is nothing broken there is Thank nothing you, lacking Lord. because Thank God you, you know all you see all and you care about all yes. and God that you are faithful and that you, they will know and that they will understand your faithfulness in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen Pastor Michael I'm I'm excited for us to be able to speak into our teenagers tonight and I'm thankful uh, that you're back at the family table for a second time uh, in about a month's span. This is our second time to have a family roundtable. And we had so much fun the last time with you and your wife that we just kind of multiplied this out and said, let's, let's go for it again. And I wanted you to talk for a moment uh, about how parents can strategize to build a team around their teenagers. I, I think we, we've heard statements in the past, it takes a community to raise a child. Um, and I think to some degree... Uh, there's some validity to that. Um, and I think you want to make sure the right people are influencing that community. I don't want just anyone speaking into my child and leading them the wrong way. But if you were to talk, as you're talking to parents tonight, we even have grandparents that are raising uh, yeah. Yeah. teenagers. How do, we, how do we come along beside and help them? Uh, first, I want to first look at First Thessalonians 5, 13 through 15. It's going to hit. Uh, a lot of what we talked about in Titus 2 and what Marsha and Shelby shared. Uh, this is the message translation. I like it because it was very blunt. There you go. And, and spoke quite clearly. It says, get along among yourselves, each of you doing your part. Our counsel is that you warn the freeloaders to get a move on. <laughs> very blunt. Oh, come on. <laughs> Gently encourage the stragglers and reach out to the exhausted, pulling them to their feet. Be patient with each person, attentive to individual needs, and be careful to when, uh, be careful that when you get on, uh, when you get on each other's nerves, you don't <laughs> snap at each other. Come on, <laughs> look at the best in each other, and always do your best to bring it out. That's a good word. We are all in the same situation right now. <laughs> like we said, we're all breathing each other's air. We're all sandpaper to each other right now. So chances are. If you're getting annoyed with your, your sibling, your, uh, your son, your daughter, your grandparent, uh, a coworker, if you're working right now, if you're getting annoyed with them, chances are they're getting annoyed with you as well. There you go. <laughs> um, and it's a good point. So now, one of the how in the world could that be possible? <laughs> but it's a good point. Yeah. Um, so the biggest thing to think about, because we're all in this same boat, like we've talked about already, is modeling. Yeah. Model patience with, with your, your children, uh, with your parents, with coworkers. If you're modeling this, you're modeling a godly virtue. Yes. And you're showing, you're showing God. And like we talked about having um, people being saved just off of seeing and reading the person as what they're doing. 
li- reading their life, and that is you reflecting God. You're re- you reflecting the word. People get saved off of just that. Yes. So we need to make sure we are modeling. Mm-hmm. And as far as bringing, uh, we we're building a community mm-hmm. around, around our, our children. We have to first have communion with each other. Yes. We have to have fellowship with each other. So first I want to encourage you, if you're not getting on the, the women's Zoom meeting or the men's Zoom meeting, to do so. Sure. You can't know who to put in your children's life if you're not knowing people. If you're not getting to know That's people, good. you have to get to know people. That's really good. You have to open yourself up. You can't live in fear in this time. Right. You have to live open to, to people, whether it be on the phone, social media, or however it may be. We need to be open. We need to be growing the community, getting to know people so we know who to put into lo- people's life. And also, don't put people into your, your student's life so that you get to know their, their, their intimate issues. One thing I have thought about because I am the youth pastor and I have a son is what happens if when I'm, while I'm still youth par- pastoring, if I'm still youth pastoring at that time and my son is in my youth group. Right. All the students have someone to turn to, me, but who does he turn to? I need to find somebody that I can trust and tell that person, I want you to be in my son's life. And if he tells you something, you don't have to tell me. You just need to hear him and help him. Mm-hmm. And that's important. We don't need to, to put people in our, in our kids' lives so that we can get the gossip, right. or as the, 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 the students are calling the tea, the tea right now. Mm-hmm. So if you hear a student say tea, they're talking about gossip. <laughs> we're, we don't need to, to try to get all their all their intimate information we need to to know that they need to know that we trust them and that they need someone that they can trust as well right so that's that's the first key as far as uh parents getting a community built engaging your students i want to talk about that for a second just because there's several ways that you can engage with your students but i, I want to hit one big one and that's daily devotions. The uh, the U Version Bible app has a, a setting that you can do. you can open a devotion and invite people in and have group devotions. Mm-hmm. So one way you can have a devotion with your student is with your child, or is you can open that app, have a devotion with them, and that gives them the freedom to do that devotion on their own that day. You can communicate back and forth on that devotion, on the app itself. And it just, it opens up so much more. They don't feel the, the pressure necessarily to get the devotion done. Like, oh, if you don't do this devotion, blah, 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 like we have to sit down at this table. No, they have all day to get in that Bible, to read it, to digest it. And there's a, um, a tool I like to use, uh, maybe even to get them a, a a devotional journal or something they can write because that helps process what they're thinking. And um, I, I like to use the, the SOAP approach, mm-hmm. which is scripture. You write the scripture address down mm-hmm. of what you read that day. You write down the observation. That's the O. You write the, what, you have, what you observed. What is the life tool you observed in the scripture reading that day? And then you write down the application. How can I be better from this? Mm-hmm. And then P is prayer. You write your prayer out. Mm-hmm. I would also say if you do buy them this journal, I mean, unless you have 100% necessary costs, like you think your child is among, like along the ways of hurting themselves or something, let that be a private, a private journal. Let them be able to have something where they can put a prayer in there and they're not worried about everyone going through their journal because they need to be able to get their emotion out. They need to get everything that's inside that they're holding up. They need to be able to get it out. And even just writing it helps. Amen. That's good. And I would, I would go along with what Pastor Michael's saying. Uh, let your child have that devotion. But I take it one step further. Let them have two devotions a day. One that they're connecting in, but one you, dad, and mom are leading. Uh, we need to have a reestablishment that the first pastor of your home is not Pastor Luke. That's you. Uh, you got to pastor your home. You got to shepherd your home. So uh, you need to build people in their life, exactly what he was just saying. And I would say one more step. People come and people go. So if you build people into your, into your child's life, let's say they get a job 
um, I don't know, in Southern California, and they got to move. Uh, it's not the end of the world. So you need to build sections of people, teams of people, not just one person, and just build that strategy, build that flow. And um, so I just want to encourage you uh, during this season, really engage with your student. And I would I'd take it one step further than just spiritual growth. Make sure your child is not slacking when it comes to reading, or when it comes to really continuing to, to learn, because yeah. schools are shut down officially uh, in the state of West Virginia, and maybe where you might be watching this from if you're in another state. So you want to keep that brain active in that student and developing them. Yeah. So just one uh, last quick statement and Bible verse, uh, the Passion Translation of Proverbs 22, verse 6. Dedicate your child to God and point them in the way that they should go, and the values they've learned from you will be with them for life. The values that you teach them are the best way to keep them headed in the right direction forever. Good. So, Pastor Jamie, we're going to transition this from young adults to teenagers to children. How I'm, I'm convicted and convinced that some of our children do not know our basic Bible stories. Um, and we need to get biblical literacy back into our home. There needs to be a renewed passion in seniors. There needs to be a renewed passion in adults and young adults and teenagers. Um, in our small children, and this is something we have fun with at home, uh, with Nora being five years old. Uh, these Bible stories, I think some of our adults could use a refresher from time to time. So Pastor Jamie talked to us about how to activate this in our home. Okay, I'm going to be real quick because I know we're, we're running out of time, but it was a perfect segue. I, I, the scripture that Michael just um, spoke about um, is the scripture. It ties in with what I want to read real quick. Um, in Deuteronomy 11, 18 and 19, the Lord says, Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul and bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, which is what we're doing right now, <laughs> when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied and it goes on about how it blesses your home. And so it's really important for us to be teaching our children. Don't just leave that up to the teachers at school. As you're finding out, we need to honor our teachers. Those yes. of you that are teaching your kids right yes. now their schoolwork, and you took those teachers for granted, mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you tell those teachers how much you appreciate them because Amen. you're seeing and understanding what they have to deal with in your children. <laughs> and so pray for them. And uh, thank them. But when it comes to, um, when it, I hope this ain't going to run out. When it comes, when it comes to, hello, there we go. Um, teaching the word of God to your children. Um, just be reminded that the Lord says that's our job. We're supposed to teach our children the ways of the Lord and make that uh, something that's in our, our home constantly. It's not just up to your Thrive Kids team to teach your kids the Bible stories. That should be taking place in your home. And what better way right now when you're at home together to break open some, some Bible stories and teach your children. And I just want to give you a couple of practical things um, as we wind down. Uh, there's an app. and We keep talking about version. There's a, an app on um on your smartphone, or you can use it on your tablet, and it's called Bible for Kids, and it's put out by Uversion, and it's actually cartoon uh, Bible stories that um, are interactive, so it reads the story to your kids, and they can touch the pictures, and Nora loves it so much, because when you touch the pictures, they come to life, and, uh, you know, they, it, it just takes probably maybe five minutes of a Bible story, um, but we love that in our house, and so it's called Bible for Kids, uh, put out by Version, and it's fantastic. It's a great way, and it's got all the way from creation all the way through the book of Revelation. That's right. And you can download these stories and uh, teach them to your kids. And I know Nora has her favorites, and she, she loves to go through and let them play with it, let them touch it. Um, and it reads to them, or you can read it yourself out loud. 
But that's one practical way that you can bring alive those stories. Um, another one that we, that my kids, when they were little, and now we're introducing to Nora, uh, a practical thing is Adventures in Odyssey. And I don't know if you've ever listened to those, but right now they're running a special during this quarantine time that you can sign up for free, and you get a month free of all these stories. And they're practical stories of kids dealing with, uh, like we, we were listening to ones recently about fear. And so they put out things that are applicable to what you're living in now, but it's on a kid's level where they can understand and you can just play those in your home and listen to them. And they're practical life applications um, to teach your kids. I know one thing we also love to do in our house is to act out the Bible stories. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, and yeah. so big time. This guy's crazy. You guys don't even know how silly your pastor can be <laughs> when it comes to that and it comes to our kids. And so um, break up in the Bible story and let your kids be a part. Assign them a role. Assign them one of them yes. can be David and one of them can be Goliath. And they can act out the story because when you begin to involve them, it's going to start setting that in their mind even more to be able to remember that. And they're going to have a blast. It's going to be a lot of fun. Even get towels and use them on your head as costumes. And, you know, there's lots of ways that you can make the Bible come alive. Make your sock your rock. There you go. Make a slingshot out of a pair of socks. <laughs> there make you go. It, make it fun, um, especially <laughs> if you have young kids. You know, I think uh -huh. uh, we need to revisit those Bible stories in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And so these are just some practical ways that you can um, – bring that alive in your family. And I know for us, we make sure before our kids go to bed, we have devotions together as a family. Yes. And it doesn't look the same every night. No. Um, some nights are different than others. Sometimes, like last night, uh, I had Nora actually lead us in prayer. And so even though she's five years old, she's learning how to pray for her friends. She's learning. And she's been real concerned about her friends from school because she really misses them and her teacher. And so we made sure to take time and let her pray over them. And so it's important for us to model those things that we've been talking about, but also engage our kids. Let them participate. Have them sing a worship song. Have them. I know when our boys were little, they loved to preach. They loved to have church. And they would pretend <laughs> to have church. So they'd get out the Bible, and one of them would preach. One of them would take up the offering. I mean, I did that as a kid, too, raised oh, in a yeah. pastor's home. And so <laughs> it's important right now that they're not stuck on these kind of things, playing games all the time and watching movies, but that you actually activate the Word of God and let them participate and include them as a family and make it fun, make it enjoyable, and they'll look forward to it. And so, you know, those are just some practical thoughts. I like it. Good job. I want to thank our team for an excellent a time of roundtable, and I want to thank our Family Worship Center uh, crew uh, that's behind the scenes uh, dealing with sound, uh, Brother Rob, Brother Danny, uh, you guys have done a, a great job in the sound booth. Leah, thank you. She's been so quiet back there. <laughs> and Leah, if you'll come back to the piano, we're going to close in a, in, a, in a song and prayer. And I just want to thank you for joining us tonight. It's been an incredible time of just going around the horn, if you want to call it that, and starting out with, with the testimony. Oh my goodness, that 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 two parents have been healed of the coronavirus, and and in 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 hearing how God answers prayer, I, I I love it. I've had my daughter Nora, five years old, walk up to me and lay her hands on my head and say, "Daddy, uh, she just prayed that God would heal my head. I was dealing with a headache, and and God literally healed my head. God hears a child's prayer." God hears an adult's prayer. He loves it when we connect to him. And he, and he really, really, he doesn't make a difference in saying, well, I'll just kind of answer a child's prayer. No, no, God really responds to faith, and he loves it when we, when we pray. So I just want to encourage you uh, to, uh, to take these principles, re-watch this video. Uh, maybe watch it again tomorrow night on Thursday night. Maybe, maybe take a... Uh, some time tomorrow morning and, 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 and if you're a single mom and just listen to the portion that Leslie was talking about or if you've got teenagers in your family just listen to that part Pastor Michael was talking about if you're a, a senior just listen to that to part that Marsha and Shelby were talking about and I believe that there's some practical ways that we can be better from the quarantine not worse I believe that God is reviving our home I believe that God is returning for His church soon 
Marcia, when you were talking a few moments ago, man, I feel the witness of the Lord that this guy got saved because he watched your dad. That's been a while back. But man, I felt the presence of the Lord. So rich, so rich that our lives that we're living really do count and really do make a difference. And we don't know how many people did that one person reach just because Marcia's dad lived a life that honored Jesus. God knows, and God really does care. And I just want to say from our hearts to yours that we love you and appreciate you. Now I want us to, um, to have a closing prayer, and then I'm going to have Pastor Jamie lead us in a worship song, and we're going to sign off for the night. And I just declare the blessings of the Lord be upon you and your family. So, Father, we thank you that you love us. And that quarantine is not punishment. <laughs> Some of us may have acted like it's punishment or felt like it was punishment, Lord. But you work all things together for good to those that love you and to those that are called according to your purpose. And I thank you, God, that you're going to take these practical pr principles of tonight that's been spoken of. And you're going to help us to get them into action points for our life. And that our homes are going to be the better for it. God, revive our altars. God, revive our hearts. Revive our communication. Revive the way we model a life of godliness to others. Lord, I just pray that you would cause our minds to be quickened, our spirits to be quickened, our homes to be quickened. And Lord, anyone tonight that's joining us that's not saved, God, bring conviction, bring grace, and bring transformation to their life. And help us to know at all times we can trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Jamie. I love you, Lord, I lift and I lift my high voice mm -hmm. to worship you, oh, my soul. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Wednesday night. Remember to like and share and encourage people around you to stay strong in faith. We're hoping in the next few days our governor is going to lift some things about us being able to worship together. Just know that as uh, certain restrictions are lifted, we'll come to you via Facebook Live and we'll post a video. Or we'll do something to make sure you're connected on what the plans are for Family Worship Center and reconvening back in the sanctuary. Until we do that, We'll be coming from our home on Wednesday night. We'll be having parking lot services on Sunday. And we trust that you'll be joining us continuously. Father, I just declare the blessings in favor of God upon your people. That you lavish them with your goodness. You sanctify them with your grace. And that you help us, Lord God, to put these practical principles into practice. And God, as we do this, revive, restore, and empower our homes and lives. In Jesus Christ's name. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance over you and give you peace. God bless you. We love you. Signing off from the sanctuary at Family Worship Center. God bless you.